First of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming, and I'd like to give a special thanks to our guests from the Columbus Foundation for making this possible. My name is Brett Wedding, and I'm a fourth year undergraduate student, and this is Architecture from New Perspectives. Since the conception of architecture, constructive form has inspired and instilled in motion in those who inhabit well-crafted spaces. The desire to create impressive buildings has raised questions of accessibility as the best way to understand a building is to experience it firsthand. Because of this, architects have long strived to represent buildings as carefully as possible, generating new ideas and documentation. The dawn of the 18th century saw the works of Jan Kipp and Leonard Nib come together in the Britannia Illustrata, a series of etches and drawings which showcased English palaces from aerial perspectives. The development of this drawing style has led to advances in perspective as well as mathematical precision. Over time, technology has progressed, bringing photographers airborne and liberating, and liberating them from the constraints of the ground plane. This has allowed, <laughs> sorry, however, aerial, aerial photography was conceived of as an expensive hobby. It offered new insights to buildings and landscapes, but only to those who could afford chartered flights and expensive equipment. That's until more recently, with drones becoming widely available for consumer and professional use. This has allowed for people to explore the air without ever leaving the ground. Advances in drone photography has allowed for people to project oversight in construction-related fields, the ability to measure overall health of crops in the agricultural industry, and it's allowed for three-dimensional mapping of landscapes and buildings, which I'll touch on shortly. So first of all, what made this possible was the DJI Mavic Air. This has started me on my research path because I've developed an interest in drone photography and videography. This has allowed me to share buildings and places with those who would be, other, be otherwise unable to see them firsthand. This Architecture Research Travel Award has allowed me to continue my research in drone documentation that I began as part of my STEP project. This is a garden in Oberstdorf, Germany, a village an hour outside of Munich. This our creative and artistic endeavor actually coincided with an internship that I had in 2018 in Sydney, Australia. This is also in Munich, the Olympic Park that you guys might recognize from our history classes. Um, but the internship that I had was in Sydney, and so I traveled around Sydney with this drone and this idea that I was going to do something incredible. So I took all these photos and videos, documenting everything I could along the way, and I actually put together a five-minute video that celebrated aerial photography and imagery, which I came to call architecture from a new perspective. But building on that in the summer of 2019, I was kind of determined to do something more. What else can the drone do, or how else can we push the envelope? Because anyone really can take a drone out and make a video. Unfortunately, my hometown of Dayton, Ohio is not the pinnacle of architecture. It's home, but there's other buildings to go and see. So I reached out to faculty members here in Knowlton, and I was connected to Jackie Gargis, who invited me to go on her study abroad program to Europe. This program has helped me gain access to new landscapes and build works in Switzerland, Germany, Austria, the Czech Republic, and Denmark. The original intention of this project was to go abroad, to scan a few buildings in Europe, and then to bring it back home and create 3D models. However, about two weeks into the project, I crashed my drone into a tree at Ronshaw and learned about some research limitations that you would experience in the field. Uh, after a few days abroad, I was actually able to find parts to the drone, and I decided to take it a little bit easier and document the buildings and create a video, but that didn't deter me from creating uh, the project that I had set out to do. But before I get into all of that, I do want to show you guys one of the projects that I made while abroad. So some of you guys are in this, just shout out when you see yourself, if you see yourself. This is Architecture from New Perspectives, part two. There's also sounds sometimes, so. Just pretend like you're the same to music. I guess I can also kind of narrate some of this, but. So this is at Ronchamp in France. 
uh, to Lake Corbusier building. Um, it's actually really funny. So on the trip, we would go to these very serene areas and I would fly the drone, which makes this horrible buzzing sound. So you'd be trying to experience this like, very nice, tranquil architecture. And so some of the people on the trip were kind of like, it became kind of a, a running joke. But literally every time you went to a nice church, you would just kind of hear this faint buzzing in the background. I don't know if it added or detracted from the experience, but it produced some pretty cool results, I think. So. Um, but yeah, this actually is a ski slope on the top of this building. So this is in Copenhagen. So it's a new waste to energy power plant by BR Eagles. Um, it was actually under construction when we went. And like, I flew my drone and I don't know how loud that was, but it was kind of fun. <laughs> This is in Sweden. This is a Calatrava tower called Turning Corso. Uh, and then this is actually a really funny scene. So we were just in this like really cool village and I think our bus kind of got stuck like really far away from where we were supposed to be. But that actually is the hostel that we were able to stay in for the course of the night. We had the best tomato soup I've ever had. Mm. Again, there's a lot of like photos and videos from later in the trip because at this point I was able to find a store that actually sold drone parts, so it was kind of fun. So as the trip kind of went on too, I found out some new ways to do cool little videos like that. Uh, so before any of that was possible, a lot of research had to go on to understand where the drones were and were not allowed to be flown. So I would look at the different laws in Austria versus Sweden, and one actually would arrest you and place a 300 pound or like euro fine simply for having the drone in the spot that you were supposed to. So you had to be very careful and very particular about where you would fly and when you would fly to make sure that you were complying with all the rules. On top of that, I had multiple meetings with Chris Raswell who showed me how to fly the drone. And then he also taught me about a really cool software called Pix4D that I am going to talk about in just a little bit. Um, so essentially we would use geospatial information from photos and the drone documentation uh, to create 3D maps that we could actually look at in Rhino. So these 3D maps would actually be able to be brought into augmented reality, virtual reality, where they could be 3D printed or milled to give a site, a site model to your studio or to be able to look at a building like hands-on. So here's a building that you guys might recognize is Mies van der Rohe's uh, Farnsworth House. So what I'm going to show you actually is just kind of the loop that the drone would take. So it would circle the building and go back and forth in a diagonal grid, taking about 200 photos as it went. Each one of these still images has thousands of pixel points, each with specific geospatial information that is then used to create the 3D match that we actually look at in the bottom. This is a building that actually, that's back home in Dayton. So I actually had an internship over the summer in 2019 with a firm called Wolpert, which is a leader in geospatial technology. So there I learned a whole lot of stuff um, about drones, but predominantly how they can be used after emergencies or natural disasters. So we actually took a drone down um, into downtown Dayton after it was hit by the Memorial Day tornadoes and looked at a building for a client that had been damaged on the site around it to kind of say, you know, this is where your damage has been done on the roof. This is where you guys might need help. And again, these are actually dropped in to create a 3D model that the client then can have and actually look at and have in their hands to get a better idea of what they need to do next. And then of course, I didn't get the opportunity to go to Greece, but I did have the opportunity to go to Nashville to visit some classical architecture. And so, this is the most recent scan that I've done on the Parthenon in Nashville. And it's actually a really good project to scan because it sits as an object within a field. So there's very little interference from trees or there's actually very different, like there's almost no opportunity to have shadows or anything like that. So you get a really clear and precise image. And so from all these photos, you're actually able to make a 3D mesh um, given these different points right here. So each one of those has a camera direction and a location, again, with very specific geospatial information. And this is kind of mapping out the different paths that the drone flies into like the images in, that it takes. It then compiles these into these series of images that basically tells you where the camera was, when the camera was there, and what the camera saw from that vantage point. 
So a series of that, and then also pixel correction and understanding like if you have this camera taken, you actually have a certain tolerance of like how accurate this model is. And as you go up in price on drones, you actually cut down on some of that tolerance and make it very, very accurate. The DJI model that I was using can give you a pretty good idea of what it looks like. And this is what we're looking at with the parking lot. So this is the 3D mesh that was created from a series of 200 images. So I actually have this dropped into Rhino that you can click through and you can actually really see um, what is going on with this model. And so this is another perspective or perspectival view of the 3D mesh. And so you can actually get into the point where you can see the columns, you can see the freezes that go on the building, and you can really start to understand a sense of scale and its location in the context of Nashville. And so this is um, a really cool thing because we're able to, with this, with this new technology, we're able to take what we understand as an image and we're actually able to use an augmented reality to recreate this image digitally and we're able to get results that look something like this. So that's a rendered view of the Parthenon after doing just a single scan. So as you can imagine, multiple scans at multiple different times of the year, you're able to get it down to some pixel, pixel perfection, and you're able to have a very accurate 3D model of a building for people that are otherwise unable to access that firsthand. Now through this research, I've noticed a new way of perceiving and representing buildings. As a stand, we start as we normally do in reality. We then look at how we represent that reality that we know, oftentimes through the lens of photography or videography. Thanks to advances in these technologies, we're able to analyze and manifest geospatial information from these photos to create a new augmented reality. Using this newly fabricated digital world, we're able to reimagine what's possible. Lastly, we can use our skills as designers and communicators to develop and create an altered or improved physical reality from which these new augmented realities can be based. And this new physical reality brings the process back into a continuous loop of architectural significance. As my time in Alton draws to a close, I'm incredibly grateful to have been given this opportunity to turn my interest in drone photography into a substantial research endeavor. I'm grateful for the faculty and staff and to all of my new friends that have made this possible. I'm excited to see how this new way of developing buildings and this new method of documentation can grow and how we can continue to examine architecture from new perspectives. Thank you.